Just a second. Hi, sorry it took me so long answering. Earth to dad, earth to dad, over. Good morning. <laughs> oh, stop. <laughs> Can't believe it. Why, Dr. Phillips, whatever are you talking about? I hope it's not happening again. Hey, Peter, you talking to me? I hear that, uh... Stacy's made quite a transformation. That love has turned the ugly duckling into a swan. Or at least what she thinks is love. Meaning? Meaning that your love is playing its magic tricks again. Like with Vicky. Turned her from engaged to unengaged. So you could have a little bit of fun. Made her look like a fool. Well, she didn't need much help doing that. I think different. Well, differently isn't necessarily correct. You know what better be different? You better not be playing any games with Stacy. I hope that you're not getting your jollies by seeing how far she'll go to make you happy. Because if you are, man, you're going to have to answer to a lot of people. Starting with me. little flower finally blossomed. Finally. Oh, don't get me wrong. Like the poet said, a rose is a rose is a rose. It's beautiful both closed and opened. Just different things to admire at each stage. It's very diplomatic. It's very truthful. <laughs> you look wonderful. Thank you. <laughs> oh, I do have one question, though. Mm -hmm. Is all this for Gil Prescott or Stacy Phillips? Oh, come on. Well, you don't have to answer that. You might want to give it some thought, though. It was a serious question. Well, maybe I should answer it then. I can't deny Gil's part in it. He certainly makes me feel like this. But this is no less myself than what I was before. You said that yourself. And it's something that I've always known that I could do. Or at least it's something I always thought I should try. <laughs> I was kind of afraid of it. But, uh, Gil had nothing to do with that, which I guess is a roundabout way of saying it's for me. Yeah. Just where do things stand between you two? Where they were before, I guess. Well, that's not quite true. <laughs> we had, uh, quite a time last night. I see. Oh, it's, it's nothing like that. Well, I realize I don't have any right to impose my standards <gasps> on you. Daddy, I, I didn't sleep with him, if that's what you're talking about. Oh, no, I, uh... I'm sorry. I, I had no right to think that. <laughs> well, let's just take these changes one at a time. <laughs> I'll second that. <laughs> so, just, uh, what did make it a wonderful night last night? Well, dinner, dancing, a long walk, and a very frank discussion about not sleeping together at his insistence. It was all very nice, and probably by anyone else's standards, very boring. But it made me very happy. I think that Gil Prescott may be discovering for the first time that an emotional commitment should come before a sexual one. So, uh, 
What line are you giving her, man? What approach are you using? Because it's got to be pretty incredible for her to be falling for it. She's not stupid. All right, knock it off, Davidson. Don't take out your hang-ups about Vicky Lang on me. Hang-ups? Yeah. That's what this is all about, isn't it? I mean, if you could admit the truth, you could admit that you're the one that's really using Stacy. Me? Yeah. You needed an excuse to come in here and light into me. You don't care about Stacy. Wrong. You're very wrong. I care. Look, I feel sorry for anybody that has anything that you want. I feel especially sorry for them if you get it. Because it's just as quick as you can, you're going to say goodbye. If you give them the courtesy of that. Out of respect for our friendship, I'm going to walk out of here without busting you in the face first. What does it you want, Gil? A few laughs, huh? You want to see what it takes for someone intelligent to give in to you? I... Well, buddy, what was that all about? My invitation to the north end of a horse going south. <laughs> Well, it's real nice to know that somebody else can do that besides me. Mm -hmm. Had to be over a woman. Yeah? Vicki Lang you were talking about the other day? Gil's treatment of her and every single woman he's ever had association with, yeah. Let me tell you something, Pete. Yeah, you can say something to some people and do whatever you want to do, but you just can't change them. I don't believe that, though. See, you gotta try, especially when it's someone like Gil, all the people he's hurt. You save yourself a lot of aggravation if you do it my way, so... How is Vicky Lane? She's doing she's doing a lot better. Yeah. See, we're trying to get her on this work rehabilitation program. And if we do that, she's gonna spend a lot more time outside of the prison. Yeah, thanks a lot. Hey, can you get us a couple coffees? Sure. Thank you. Appreciate it. Well, will any of that time get to be spent with you? <laughs> if I have anything to do with it, you bet. Oh, you. yeah, well, it sounds like things are going pretty good in the romance department. They there, are. Huh? I almost got out of the parking lot before I realized you're not going to get rid of me that easy. I have a few things I want to say to you, Davidson. Well, Mr. Carpenter, I must say this is a real pleasure. Well, let's see how I feel after this meeting's over. Yes, sir. Well, um, can I get you some coffee or something before we start? No, I'd like to get right down to business. Of course. Have a seat. Thank you. You, uh, got the custody papers and so forth from my former lawyer? Yes, I did. Mr. Webster had them delivered, and, uh, I've gone over everything very carefully. And what do you think of that original divorce settlement? <sighs> well, Mr. Carpenter, let me put it to you this way, and please forgive my bluntness. If gaining visitation rights is what you're after, you should count your blessings that Paul Mason is dead. You and your daughter were very poorly represented in this case. Yes, well, uh, regrettably, corporation lawyer handled the affair. Uh, also, at the same time, I was distracted by some financial difficulties, which accounts for my poor showing. Uh, well, I trust all that's changed now. Most assuredly. Mr. Myers, I am not just interested in going for visitation rights. I want full custody. Uh-huh. I see. So you don't want the boy's mother in the picture at all? That's correct. Uh-huh. Well, sir, perhaps you could explain to me why and how you plan to accomplish that. Uh, uh, Mr. Myers, how you will accomplish it. As you saw from those divorce proceedings there, my daughter was declared an unfit mother. Now, that's a difficult decision to accept. I did at the time because I chalked it up to the absurdities of the legal system. Mm -hmm. But now you feel different. Most assuredly, I do. In fact, I agree with the judge's decision. Hmm. Why? Oh, there are many reasons for that. I'm a proud man, Mr. Myers. The thought of my own flesh and blood being any less than I am is a little disturbing to me. But time has shown me the error of that thinking. Now, my daughter was caught in adultery, a very unpleasant but nevertheless an undeniable fact. She was also labeled negligent. Again, unpleasant but a substantiated fact. I might also add that she was cited for contempt during the trial mm -hmm. as well. Twice, uh, as I read this report, is that right? Mm -hmm. Highly indicative. Yes. Mr. Carpenter, with all respect, uh, I am familiar with these charges. Uh, they don't paint a very flattering portrait of your daughter, but 
To do what you have in mind, we'd need much more. You see, as the only surviving parent, her rights are almost unassailable. Well, during the past year, my daughter became addicted to barbiturates. She was under treatment by a psychiatrist for acute schizophrenia. She became deeply involved with a fanatic religious group. And then she endangered my grandson's life by taking him out of one of the best neighborhoods and putting him into one of the worst. And the house that she forces him to live in is shared not only by known criminals, but also by a prostitute. Now, I have the medical records and the witnesses to back up these charges. Now, what do you say? Mr. Carpenter, if we can prove these things to a judge, I have no doubt that you'd be awarded custody of your grandson. Now, can you think of anything else? Well, I'd have to say that uh, Miriam's kidnapping experience has contributed greatly to her instability. The kidnapping? Mm -hmm. That's right. I, I hadn't made that connection before. She was held captive for some time, wasn't she? For over three and a half months, and subjected to some pretty cruel treatment, too, which, of course, uh, I can sympathize with. But, frankly, I feel that this helped to push her over the edge. She refused to see a psychiatrist after that. Do you know that she actually claimed that God spoke to her through this ordeal and that he helped her maintain her sanity? Too bad. <laughs> and along about that time, we began having our discuss no, our fights about her treatment of Eric. Now, would you believe that she felt that being deprived of so much for so long was actually beneficial, and she plans to apply that same treatment to her son? Modified, of course, but the principle is nevertheless the same. And she won't let me give him any presents either, which is certainly not any kind of a normal grandfather-grandson relationship I've ever heard of. Along with that, she's, of course, forced him to live in the ghetto, claiming that uh, there is nobility in poverty. Now, I, I just can't bear that. Now, were there any witnesses to these confrontations? Well, Eric, maybe. Certainly my housekeeper. Uh -huh. As you might imagine, uh, Miriam and I tried to keep these arguments private, but I, <laughs> I'm quite certain that both of them heard plenty. Uh, well, now, this could get a little touchy. Uh, but it's, it is worth looking into. What do you mean, could get a little touchy? Those arguments actually happened. Well, yeah, all right, yes. But with no firm witnesses, it's just your word against hers. But uh, don't worry, though. Her behavior definitely backs up your claims. Were there ever any incidents in public? Uh, did she ever show any signs of her erratic behavior in front of other people? Yes, as a matter of fact, there was. I'd taken her to the Greenbrier to lunch to uh, calmly and rationally explain to her exactly what she was exposing Eric to. And in the middle of all this, probably because she disagreed with me, she jumped up and started to leave. Well, she'd gotten herself so upset that uh, she knocked the tray out of the waiter's hand and, well, it was very embarrassing. Ah, that's good. That's real good. Can you remember the date of that by any chance? No, no, it was a couple of weeks ago. Okay, that's all right. I can get it from the restaurant. They'll have the reservation book, and I can get the names of witnesses from that, too. Mm -hmm. Mr. Myers, it is not my purpose in this to discredit my daughter. What I'm really interested in is to ensure the safety of my grandson. Mr. Carpenter, when I get done, that's exactly what you'll be able to do. You know, you really disappoint me, Peter. You're the guy who always gives everybody the benefit of the doubt. Everybody but me. Now, I don't deny that I've got a reputation. I made it, so I've got to pay for it. But I do deny that I'm trying to play some sort of practical joke or game with Stacy. I care about her. Now, I may not make any difference or be important to you, but I felt like I had to come in here and try to get that into your fat head. Hey, wait. I'm sorry, but uh, you're right. I, this whole thing about Vicky's just got me bugged a little bit. You gotta admit, though, I have a legitimate complaint. What? That's the woman that ruined me. Look, that isn't what we're talking about. I, I'm sorry that I didn't take your word back there, and uh, I'm sorry I got mad.
Not that it's an excuse, but... But I'd bet that I'm not the only person who thinks that this relationship's just a little bit unusual. Meaning that it's not what I usually go for? More or less. Well, you're not the only one that feels that way. The point is, is... I didn't really go after it. What we have is... Something that just happened. And I really respect her. Just like I respect Marianne, Peter. What's the matter with you, huh? Hold it, now this is unreal. I'm between two uh, known... Ah, 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 ah. How you doing, Russ? Oh, as well as could be expected, I guess. Sounds like things are going pretty good for you. Yeah, except uh, with Davidson here. He's all right. Listen, you, uh, you heard from Marianne? She hasn't written. Sorry. Just that, um, she's fine and seems to be happy with Dad. Good, good. Well, look, I've said what I have to say. Uh, see you guys later, huh? Yeah, you take care. See you later. Right. See you. Mm. You know, I get the distinct impression that uh, you're still a little upset with me for what happened to Marianne. Can't say as I blame him. Yeah, I guess you're right. I still think it was the right thing to do, though. Oh, that's good. Right? <laughs> think I took enough pictures? Uh, I think two rolls of him sleeping and three of him awake should be enough. Am I overdoing it? No! I think it's cute. Cute? <laughs> Come <laughs> in. You ready to give up the little no, guy? No, never, never. <laughs> Any problems? Well, not really. Um, He only took about two ounces of water, but... Ben says that's all right. <laughs> Far be it from me to argue with the doctor. <laughs> okay, Scott. You've been a good boy. Hey. Mm. Don't take any wooden nickels, kid. <laughs> I think it's never too early to start in with the fatherly advice. Yeah, well, if it's going to be that quality, I think he's in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I hate to let him go. Oh, don't worry. He'll want to eat again soon enough. <laughs> Which means you should try and get some sleep. You didn't have much last night. Am I complaining? No. But some of that radiant glow of motherhood is starting to wear off. <laughs> and I figure it's only good for about two weeks. Uh, <laughs> so I, I, I don't want it to go away. Two weeks? Yeah, well then what happened? Then the reality of what we got ourselves into takes over. Sounds like it already has for you. Maybe a little. Well, so much for the uh, radiant glow of fatherhood. What's wrong? I guess it kind of scares me to think of how responsible I am for another human being. How dependent that little guy is on me. Yeah, well, you know, I'd be pretty scared, too, if I was thinking about it that way. Scott isn't dependent on you, Gary. Or on me. We're all in God's hands. And he's looking after that little baby much more than we are. Is that my cue to sit back and uh, ignore my responsibilities? Of course not. But it is your cue to stop worrying about living up to all of them. Yeah. It's your hand, isn't it? Because it hasn't healed, you're afraid you're not going to be able to make a living. You are right. I really should do something nice for Mrs. Davidson to show her my appreciation. What if I give her a uh, crash course in investigative journalism? <laughs> well, that's not exactly what I had in mind. <laughs> Spoil sport. <laughs> Hi. <clears throat> oh, well, I uh, guess I'd better be off to the clinic. Dr. Phillips, it's uh, good to see you again. Yeah? Oh, oh, you really don't have to go, Dad. Oh, give me a little credit, honey. Oh, uh, have a nice day. You too. We'll mm -hmm. have to do this again sometime. <sighs> Definitely. <laughs> I, uh... I just wanted to let you know that I had a great time last night. You couldn't have accomplished that with a phone call? 
wouldn't have been the same. No, it wouldn't have, would it? Are you telling me you're not worried? Lori, I make a third of what I made as a surgeon now that I'm working full-time at the clinic. And Ben, are we really any worse off for it? I don't care. Yeah, well, tell me that. When we need a new car and we can't afford it. Or when we need new clothes and the budget won't allow it. Or, or Scott needs new shoes every two months and you have to give up something you really need. Ben, we have both said we are willing to make those sacrifices. Now, you're using money as an excuse. No, I'm not using yeah. money as an excuse. Yes, you are. You know that God's going to supply all those needs. What you're really upset about is that you've lost a career. It's the one area of our lives that God has not healed, and you're angry with him for that. Why don't you pray for your hand to be healed anymore? We have prayed. Who said we should stop? Maybe God did by not answering us. He just hasn't answered us yet. You know, there's a lot of people that think that what we're doing is pretty crazy. I know. I'm one of them. Really? <laughs> yeah. But don't worry. I'm having too much fun to stop. You ready? Ready. I'll, I'll get that. <laughs> 